just having a structure in your calendar that you follow. So you know, on Mondays, this is what I need to do. On Tuesdays, this is what I need to do. On Wednesdays, this is what I need to do. Not just real estate. A lot of that is personal stuff. And it's really so I don't screw up my commitments to my kids or my family or my commitments to myself. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. I muted. I didn't know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Agent Power Huddle. I'm Amy Izzo, and I'm glad to be live with some of you. So awesome. I don't know about you, but I can't believe it's October 18th. October is flying by. It's just flying by for me. So um, today I want to talk about follow-up. Um, I think it's super important um, that we spend a good amount of time on follow-up today, um, just because I don't think we've talked about it in a while. <clears throat> and But I want to start with you are in the throes of the fourth quarter and there's a lot of noise, isn't there? There's a lot of noise from the media, noise about interest rates, noise about price drops, noise about the politics around real estate. There is a ton of noise and your clients are hearing the noise, but I know you're hearing it too. Now is not the time to rest on our laurels, especially as we get into holidays. This is the time of season, time of year where a lot of festivities are happening. We're connecting sometimes um, through different events, fundraisers, maybe just getting together events with uh, family and friends and uh, colleagues. And sometimes, you know, your Wednesday can become a Friday and then Thursday became a Friday and then Friday was Friday, right? And so we're spending a lot of time out of the business instead of working in the business. I want you to have holidays, that's for sure, and all of your festivities, but really have a plan to manage your time in the fourth quarter. I have been in the business 10 years. I will say um, I have had transactions from month six in the business every single month through this month, right? So I've never had a month, not a December, not a January, not a November where I didn't close a deal for month six on in my career. And that's really because of the intention that I put around the business. And this is what I teach agents that I work with to do is really be looking at your business in 90 day increments. If you've been on my agent power house before, you've heard that talk really be looking in 90 day agreements at your business and drive your activity as such. And the holidays is a really easy time to tap out and I'll be back in spring, tap out and I'll be back in after the new year. We don't want you to do that. When you tap out of your business for a couple of weeks, even it takes a couple of weeks to catch back up, to be ahead of your pipeline in that 90 day window. So you really want to be, um, cognizant of where you're at in your business, what your pipeline looks like, and keep building your pipeline. Even if you feel like you're making less connections right now, people are starting to get a little bit distracted. Um, there's more noise you know, out in the marketplace. So I think consumers have even more questions. I just saw some media uh, this week around how buyers should wait because the home prices are going to drop 25 to 30% nationally. And, and there may be some truth in price reductions, but in my market in the Midwest, what I'm consistently seeing is the price reductions are mostly driven by overpricing. You know, whether that was the seller wanted to really push the market because of some of the things they've seen in history uh, recently relative to prices, or it's because, you know, the agent was a little aggressive, which we're human, so that can happen. Um, that's really where I'm seeing the majority of the price reductions come from, or a seller that is maybe priced right, but is in a hurry, right? And they want a quick sale. So they're lowering that price to get a move on in their life. They have a lot of equity in their home. They're willing to give a little bit of that up. I'm seeing some of that on a lower level, but I'm seeing some of that on the market here too. So, you know, I don't know that, we, I don't know that any of us have a crystal ball and know if 30% price reductions are coming nationally or where the interest rates are really gonna go. All we can do is do what we do, follow the marketplace, be educated, um, and know that whether price reductions come or not, values go up every month. Every time a home closes, the next one in the neighborhood lists a little bit higher. 
right? Just a little bit higher or right around that price. And then the next one is a little bit higher. So we know what weighting does. Weighting drives the price up regardless of interest rate. Interest rate can and will come down. It's cyclical at some point, right? So really not letting that noise negatively impact you and have you tap out early or tap out for the holidays, whatever it may be, I think is super important over this last quarter of the year. You're building right now, November, December, and January. You're building the end of your Q4 and the beginning of your Q1. That's what you're building right now. And there are lesser, a lesser number of transactions this time of year. So I always feel like we've got to double down our activity here in the next 90 days, more than in any other 90 day period, because we're not approaching a spring market, we're not approaching a summer market that are traditionally busier, right? We are in a fall market approaching a winter market, no matter of our climate, right? And so if we really want to drive a certain income for ourselves and predict our income, our activity really should be higher, not lower this time of year, knowing that we're going to meet some people that just aren't ready, that are going to choose to wait until after the holidays. Um, And we're going to meet some people that we are able to help get them ready, maybe even sooner than they thought. But to get to those, we're going to have to get through quite a few conversations. So I would really look at your activity over the next 90 days and be intentional about how you direct your time more so now than any other time during the year. So I just want to make sure I share that. And so part of the my intention with my time is follow up. And that's what today's topic is about. It's what how are we handling our follow up? What does that look like? Uh, what are the different ways we can follow up? And um, how often should we be following up? I hear sometimes from agents that, oh, I just feel like I'm bothering the other party, right? I feel like I'm a pest. I'm in their face too much. And I think a lot of the time when we break that down, it's really our mindset. It's really not that we are being a pest or that we're in someone's face too much. Um, Especially when someone's unresponsive to us, I think that becomes um, a mindset, you know, shift for us because I hear agents that say, well, that person is just not responding and I have followed up many times. So I'm done. I'm not going to follow up anymore. I believe in we follow up until they buy or die. Not really die. So they tell us to go away, right? Go away forever. We follow up forever, even if they never respond. And I've had too many transactions in my own production. um, And I've had so many of my agents experience this where they do stay the course. We do continue to follow up to someone that is unresponsive. And guess what? When they're ready, many times they call us. I just had a buyer's agent on my team. I kept asking him every month about this um, this particular client that came through our database, came through our CRM. They're just not responding. They're just not responding. I'm calling. I'm leaving messages. I'm sending video text, right? I'm sending text messages. I'm emailing. I said, okay, they're not responding. Have they turned us off? Have they unsubscribed from the text? Have they responded and said, go away? You know, have they unsubscribed from the email? No. Okay, well, then they're still getting something of value. Either they're just completely ignoring us, right? Which is could happen, but it's probably not likely. This went on for a nine month period. Or they're getting something of value, but they're not responding. I'm this consumer, which is why I'm so um, engaged in what this consumer can be like. I'm this consumer. If I'm not ready for you and you're reaching out to me, I won't respond to you. I I just won't. When I'm ready for that thing you're contacting me about, I'll reach out if you're still in my world, if you're still in my proximity. If I don't like the information you're sending me, I'll delete you. I'll eventually I'll unsubscribe you, right? I'll tell you to not contact me anymore. I'll tell you to go away. But if I like what I'm receiving and it's speaking to me on any level, but I just am not ready to engage, life is busy. I'm really not decided. I don't want to talk to you yet. I don't, I'm not ready to be influenced. I just won't respond to you forever and ever and ever. And then when I'm ready, I'll respond to you. My car dealer guy knows this. 
Um, he just sold me a new car recently. He's been in my proximity for years, but I haven't talked to him in probably five years. I wasn't, no, let's say three years. I wasn't ready for a, a new car yet. When I was ready, even though I had only worked with him once before, he was still coming into my world. He was still in my proximity. I picked up the phone and said, let's let's talk, Ricky. Here's what I want. Here's what I'm interested in now. Um, but if he hadn't been following up with me, I probably just would have went to any old dealership and found someone that I wanted to purchase the car from, right? So I went back to him because he stayed in my proximity all this time. We need to think the same way. So follow. you need to think about your follow-up in different buckets. So let's start with your SOI because I always think that is the easiest and best place to follow up because those people like us. They know they like and they trust us. But it also can be the easiest one to neglect because they know and they like and they trust us, right? And, you know, so it can be a, and sometimes we don't want to bother them, right? And that's because I think we're thinking about the conversation as a real estate conversation instead of just a conversation, right? So when I'm following up with my SOI, some of those are past clients. So I just actually did one this week. I had a, I have one day a week that I follow up with some of my SOI. So I like to take the different days of the week and decide what my call activity is going to be. I don't love to make calls, but I do make calls. I call leads all the time. I don't like it. But what helps me to like it a little bit more is to have at least one friendly conversation with someone that knows, likes, and trusts me. So I usually start my week off with SOI. So Mondays when I make calls, I focus on SOI. Um, and I do one more thing on money that I'll talk about in a minute, but I focus on SOI first because it puts me in a good mood. And that's just about my self-awareness. So I'll call some SOI. I have a big SOI now. When I started in the business, I had zero SOI because I moved to a new area where I didn't know anyone. So my SOI that I did have was in another state. I still use the strategy of calling them and just chatting about, hey, how are you? And how's life? And how are the kids? And catching up. And real estate would come up because work would come up, right? So when work comes up, real estate comes up. Um, you ask them about work. They ask you about work. And here we are. So. Um, so on Mondays, I like to start my week. I just touch base with SOI first. That's the first kind of part of my call block. Um, if I don't have a lot of time to engage in many conversations, I'll do video text, which is something that, you know, I learned years ago from our, our very own Krista Mishore, those of you that are familiar with her. Um, they work. I do them all the time. I do them daily. They're a daily part of my video or of my business. What's a video text? If you don't know, you pick this up. You turn it around and you say a few little things, right? So um, if I don't have a lot of time, this Monday, I was pretty busy and I wanted to check in with a few people. My video texts and my SOI were just, hey, it's, well, they know who I am, but hey, uh, how are you? I wanted to check in, miss you. Let's have a conversation soon. Let's do coffee soon, whatever it is I wanted to do. So I sent a couple out to folks that are, I wanted to just do a couple of Zoom coffees with. I know they're super, super busy. They tend to like to get together on Zoom. Haven't talked to them in a while. But I also follow up um, with past clients on Mondays. So this week I checked in with a past client that her son re recently got married. They just celebrated two years in the house that I sold them. Um, I know her husband had a job change. So I reached out to just check in. How is your son's wedding? How's Scott's new job going? Um, from that conversation came... Oh, and there's somebody at work that wants to buy a house. I really should connect you. Oh, please connect me. If you can give me their information, I'd be happy to check in with them, follow up with them. So sometimes those conversations naturally will lead to some now business. And other times they don't lead to now business. But it is a conversation that gets you in the right mindset, that gets you touching base with someone you know, like, and trust, someone that cares about you and that knows, like, and trusts you back. Um, so that's just a feel good also, it is a reminder of what you do for a living. You, I don't rarely do I have to even bring up real estate because people know what I do. Um, and even with my past client, obviously they know what I do, right? They, they bought a house from me two years ago, but it also be, would be easy for them to forget if I didn't stay in touch. Just asking her how the wedding was, how Scott's new job was, was automatically she was like, and how's real estate? What are you up to, Right. Um, I connect with a lot of my SOI on social media. Now, I know everybody feels differently about this. 
Uh, if I talk to you on the phone and we connect, I'm probably adding you to my social media. That's just what I do. I find what it does for me is people follow me. So they learn that I'm a ballroom dancer, right? From following me. They learn that they're reminded if they hadn't learned that I'm a real estate agent. Uh, they see that I'm a mom. They see that I'm a wife. They see that I have cats, right? Whatever I'm choosing to post about. It's funny when people meet me, they go, you post about everything. I really don't. I post about things I'm comfortable sharing. I don't post about everything. There's lots of things I don't post about. Um, but I post about vacations and family and things I want to post about. And so people get to know me through my social media. And a lot of times that generates some conversation coming from a video follow-up I did with them or a text message follow-up I did with them or a voicemail that I left them. So my plan is on Monday, start with SOI. It puts me in a good mood um, and it gets me to make sure I'm connecting on a regular basis with people that know, like, and trust me, whether they're friends or family or colleagues. I do this with agents too. I'm going to give you picking up the phone and calling agents that you have relationships with across the country just to check in. And this is a great time to do it, right? A lot of some agents are doing really, really well. And some agents are really, really struggling, right? From all of the noise and all of the changes we've had this year in the market, check in on your agent friends. A, you're going to have really good conversations. You'll probably mastermind a little bit. And this is a place to share referrals. I love to do referrals with agents in other states. And so that kind of follow-up um, just checking in one, it goes to show that I care about that agent I have a relationship with. Um, also, we may learn from each other. I, I, I rarely have a conversation with another agent that I don't learn something from. I want to say I always do. I, I always learn something from our conversations. And I hope that they learn something from me too. So um, so following up with other agents, that's a, another good kind of easy activity to do. And then lead follow-up. So if you're doing any kind of online lead generation whatsoever, you know whether you're doing Facebook lead or you're purchasing leads or even your organic leads that are coming through your social media, coming through your website, if you have a website, coming through your CRM, you want to be checking in with those folks on a regular basis. So I start off with my SOI and then I allocate time every day to take a look. Hopefully you're using a CRM. I am to take a look at my CRM and just uh, my CRM gives everything a lead score. So taking a look at who's the most engaged, what's the lead score? Who's the most engaged? Let me call some of them. Um, I love to call the most engaged first because when I reach them, they're pretty engaged with my content. So usually they have some recollection of me or some recollection that we're that receiving real estate listings or evaluation or a video or whatever they received. So I can get a gauge when I do reach them of where they're at in the process. A lot of times your online leads found you on social media or found you when they were browsing the web. and they got curious enough to get into your pipeline, to click and come into your world, but they may or may not be ready. We don't always know from the lead, the way that they fill that out, maybe, for example, or the way they engage, we don't always know, are they zero to three months? Are they six months? Are they a year out? Sometimes I would say they don't even know until we connect with them on the phone, which can take some time. So when we connect with them on the phone, and we can finally have some good conversation. This is where we can learn where they're at. And often they're they're they often they learn things from their conversation with us that pull them forward a little bit sooner. Um, a little bit sooner. So following up with your online leads. So Mondays I follow up with my SOI. Mondays if I also follow up with any sellers. So any listings that I have, all my sellers know I'm gonna call them on Mondays and I'm gonna tell them how the weekend go. And how last we go with showings and I'm going to have a recommendation for what we do this week. Even if the recommendation is <clears throat> hold the course, stay the course. Let's see what happens over the next seven days, right? Even if that's the recommendation, it's not always a recommendation that we should change something in the house. It's not always a recommendation that we should price adjust. Sometimes it's a stay the course recommendation, but no matter what, sellers are going to hear from me every Monday. So Monday says SOI and sellers. It's my S day. Right. And I also any any online leads that are have that are engaged in my system. Now, I would say every day that I work, I call any online leads in my CRM that have a high lead score. Right. So 
Monday, I might call a bunch. And then Tuesday, I might call the same ones if I didn't reach them. And then some new ones, right? Same thing Wednesday, same thing Thursday. Um, I do call. When I call, I also text. I like to video text, right? So I like to record a little message. Hi, this is Amy. You requested a home valuation. Just want to make sure you receive that. Hi, it's Amy. You requested a home valuation. Just want to make sure. Or I saw you open the home valuation. I can see opens. Just want to ask what questions you had on that, right? What questions can I answer for you? That might be a a good video text. People can see me. They can see my personality. A lot of times those get responses over and above a voicemail or just a phone call. I'm always calling though, because I want them to answer. So when I catch them on the phone, often I can either set up an appointment to talk to them if they're they're too busy right now, or I can talk to them right in the moment. A lot of times I can talk to them right in the moment. So I'm always calling, texting. Uh, I like to video text and then email. So SOI, leads every day. I would say online leads every day and um, Sphere on Mondays. On Tuesdays, I call my buyers. So any buyers that are under contract or that were actively shopping, Tuesday is my day to call them. That doesn't mean I don't talk to them on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, but that is my day to look at their transactions if they're under contract and go, okay, where are we at in the lending? Where are we at in the appraisal? What's coming up next? Where are we at towards the closing date? Where are we at towards their inspection? All of the timeline that's in their um in their contract, where are we? And do they have a good update of that? And if not, let me get that to them. Gets me engaged with them, gets them talking to me, gives me an opportunity also to ask for a referral or a testimonial. I ask my buyers for testimonials prior to closing. So after inspection, as we're preparing to close is when I start asking for testimonials. Um, But Amy, we haven't closed yet. So what? The day that you close, they get super busy. Right. And then you're chasing them for days and weeks and months trying to get testimonials. I get more testimonials on Google because I start asking earlier than when I used to wait till the closing. I used to wait till closing and say, I'm going to send you this link and can you do this for me? And yes, yes, yes. And I would follow up with them and follow up with them. And they would eventually do it. When I started asking after inspection, while we're just now kind of waiting for appraisal, waiting to close, preparing to close, they're in a good mood usually. Right. We've negotiated through the stuff. We know now we're just waiting for appraisal, waiting for the closing date. They're doing whatever they're doing with the lender. I'm going to keep talking to them every week. Good opportunity for me to say, hey, you know, now would be a great time to give me a review, you know, and let me know how I'm doing. So let me send you the link to do that. And I like those to be on Google. So because why? Because that's where a lot of people are shopping is on Google. I like those to be on Google. So buyers are on Tuesday and that's, and I tell my buyers that. In my consult, when they go under contract, when I'm working with them, they're on Tuesday. Now, if they're shopping, it's sort of the same thing. I'm checking with them on Tuesday, unless I called them on Monday for some reason. So if you know I saw a house go on the market for a buyer I'm shopping, and I wanted to get them out to see that quickly, I probably already talked to them on Monday. But if I haven't talked to them on Tuesday, I'm revisiting with them. Where are we at in the shopping experience, right? What are the homes that I'm recommending that they go see next? Like I always call them with a recommendation. I don't just, and if it's a text, I text them with a recommendation. And if it's a video text, I have something that I'm recommending that they do in the video text. So I always have a recommendation for them. Then the other days of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm still calling SOI I didn't get to on Monday, right? Just because it puts me in a good mood and it's a good way for me to start my calls. Couple of calls to SOI. But then I'm calling through the database, right? I'm calling any leads that have been unresponsive. And I'm also doing video texts. Um, I started to say one of the gentlemen on my team, uh, we were going, we, we were, he was working through this lead and I asked him every month over and over again, have, have they responded? Have you called them? What is going on? Finally, they responded. Um, Nine months, guys, of him video texting, texting, leaving messages, sending emails. They never unsubscribed from our content. Nine months of him once a week or every other week sometimes just following up. So at least twice a month, checking in to hear nothing back. And when he finally heard back, they were ready to buy. He got them under contract on a $975,000 sale cash. We didn't know any of that, by the way, when we were following up with the lead. We didn't know that all year long. So we found that out just through engaging with them um, over and over and over again, even though they weren't responding. So even your unresponsive leads, you want to stay engaged with 
really until they turn you off, until they tell you to go away, right? They unsubscribe or they say stop or whatever they do. They tell you to go away because people are busy. Life is busy and you just don't know what's happening on the other side. So if we cannot take it personally and just stay the course on our activity, the average agent stops following up after two times, two times. So even if they tell me they have an agent, but they stay in my system, I respect that they have an agent. And I say that I'm glad you have an agent that you love to work with. You, you're you welcome to continue to receive my contact if, content. If I can ever be of service, let me know. And I check in with them because a lot of times that agent falls out of relationship with them. Something goes wrong. Many times I've had people come to me and say, oh, it's not going well over here. Can I talk to you? So, and sometimes you know, those will turn into a change of agent. So you just never know. I'm not targeting them. If they tell me they have an agent, I note that in my CRM, I know they have an agent, but I'm not taking them out either because I just don't know what's going to happen and how that's going to develop. Um, and I want to be there to help if I can. So I've had people that were working with an agent who went out of the business and they're like, now I need an agent, but they were in my database. So then they called me. So, or they're working with a family member that, that's an agent and it was creating some uh, friction in the family. And they're like, we just need to get somebody that's not related to us working. They're in my database. They're receiving my content. They're hearing from me, just checking in with them. If you're doing open houses, you should have, you should be having a designated day that you follow up with your open houses as well. I do that on Mondays because my open houses were probably over the weekend. So Monday, I follow up with everybody from the open house. And I tell people that come through the open house that I'm going to follow up with them on Mondays as well. So just put a structure in place for yourself of when you call to follow up and how you follow up. Do you just call? Do you text? Do you email? Do you use video? I highly recommend using video. Your response rate when you use video over time, even just one-to-one video, when you're just sending one message to someone um, through text, through, and even through social media, we have Messenger and Instagram and Messenger and Facebook. I do a lot of follow-up and a lot of prospecting that way too. Anyone that comments on your social media, real estate posts, likes, loves, or comments is a potential lead. I always go into Messenger. I have a day when I do that. I do that on Wednesdays. So today is my social media day. I did that this morning. Um, I go into my posts to see who's liking them, who's loving them, who's commenting. And I make sure that I respond to all of them um, via a Messenger function, whether that's Facebook or Instagram, depending on where that post was, so that even if it's just to thank them for liking my post and letting them know if they need more information, I'm here for them. A lot of times, just that message generates a response that creates a conversation. So start looking at your social media as well as a place to follow up. When do you follow up with SOI? When do you follow up with past clients? Also part of your SOI. When do you follow up with buyers and sellers that you're currently working with? When do you follow up with leads, prospects, people that you want to be working with? I have someone that'll list their house in November that I've been working with since June. And we're just finally getting to the place where they will actually be able to list. Looks like it'll be just before Thanksgiving. What, how do I know? Well, now they're they're moving out of state. Now they're packing up their house. Now they finally found a house. It took them some time. And they want to be gone from here before we list. So staying engaged with them. I talk, I stay engaged with them. At first, it was once a week. Then it went to every two weeks. So now I'm every two weeks, just so that I'm not too overwhelming to them uh, as they're doing all of their things. I'm engaging with them every two weeks. So I will definitely have this listing by the end of this, right? Because I'm the one with them helping them all the way through. So when do you follow up with people like that, that you know are going to do something sometime in the future? How can you add value to them in your follow-up? What information can you give them? And just having a structure in your calendar on your whiteboard, on your wall that you follow. That, so you know, on Mondays, this is what I need to do. On Tuesdays, this is what I need to do. On Wednesdays, this is what I need to do. Even if you're not, I'm very structured. I'm scheduled from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. Not just real estate. A lot of that is personal stuff. And it's really so I don't screw up my commitments to my kids or my family or 
my commitments to myself. And I build my real estate into that time block. Even if you don't do that, but you just have a schedule right now of when you call and you follow up with who, you know, every single week so that you are contacting people that may be able to help you grow your real estate business and keep it growing. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I wish you all really, really, really well and have a great day. I'll see you next week. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.